18,000 gold. According to Artnet, auction sales by Middle East artists since 2011 have grossed just $400 million. That's less than 1% of the global auction market for fine art. But does that low percentage equal a low entry price point and potential access to significant profit? Bonhams has firmly established itself as one of the leading auction houses in the Middle East category, holding regular biannual sales in both London and Dubai. In fact, during its inaugural sale of modern Middle Eastern art, in 2008, Bonhams broke 33 world records and witnessed the first artwork from the region to sell for over a million dollars. Nima Sagachi is a modern and contemporary Middle East art specialist at Bonhams. The Middle Eastern art market has really developed over the past uh, decade, really. And um, in my opinion, it's, it's really an extension of, of uh, the general uh, market for Middle Eastern artworks that's been prevalent in the West for the past few hundred years for Islamic artworks. And now, finally, the market has, has caught up to the modern and contemporary works coming from the region. I think this has really been driven by the uh, Gulf economic powerhouses, which have basically decided to take cultural stewardship of the art from the Middle East. The Gulf countries, specifically the Emirates, uh, represents a more stable, uh, more centralized uh, countries that have really had time uh, after they completed the sort of nation building process to, to focus on art, focus on culture, uh, and bring that to the forefront. In terms of the art that people are most focused on, are they focused on artists from Iraq and from Syria, or are we talking about artists from the Levant? They've really taken uh, what have been the traditional cultural hegemons in the area, Egypt, Iraq, uh, and Lebanon. So these are the three countries which are seeing the most support institutionally. And of course, uh, on the other side, we have Iran, which is operating essentially independently within the region, but uh, also strengthening its, its position within the, the art market of the region. When we're talking about monetizing art, what kind of prices are we talking about? It's dangerous to take uh, a, a overly asset-driven approach to the art from the region, but one thing I will say is that comparative to, to Western art and comparative to the entry levels in, in what I would call transatlantic art, we're looking at a much, much lower, a much more attractive price point. So there are always these uh, accusations that, that emerging market art could be a bubble. But if anything is a bubble, it's definitely uh, Western contemporary art. Now this is one of three pieces that Bonhams will be exhibiting in their October auction. Tell me a little bit about this piece and who this artist is. This is actually a really uh, exciting Middle Eastern artist by the name of Sirak Melkonian. He's uh, an Armenian-Iranian artist who's based between Iran and Canada. And I think when most people think about um, Iranian art, they're thinking more craft-based, more calligraphic or religious. And he's really one of the pioneers of, of abstraction in Iran. And this is a sort of topographical abstraction. So he takes landscapes, but not as viewed by the observer, as viewed topographically, uh, and abstracts them. And I think it provides a, a really welcome contrast to, to more of the sort of craft-based art we see traditionally in Iran. And now this is also an Iranian artist as well, isn't it? Yeah, this is probably one of the most exciting works uh, in this auction and probably th that I've ever had the privilege of including in sale. It's an Iranian artist by the name of Manucher Yektari, and this is a portrait of Iris Klert, who was uh, an extremely famous uh, Parisian gallerist in the 1960s. And um, this has almost been undiscovered since it was exhibited in the 60s. It's been, uh, it had a stint in a museum in Geneva, and since then, it's been lying in London in, in private hands, and we have the privilege of bringing it back to the market. What about the pieces that are going to be coming out of Iran in the future? Obviously, we have this historic agreement between Tehran and the West, the possible lifting of sanctions. What does that mean for the Iranian art market? I think Iran has an extremely rich gallery scene, and in terms of Middle Eastern art, some of the, the, the most valuable artists are Iranian artists, and they've really been choked by the sanctions over the past few years. Because you guys can't buy directly from Iran, right? We can't take, uh, the auction houses don't take works directly from Iran. Iranians have been very resourceful, and there's a strong gallery base in Dubai which represents Iranian artists, so they have been able to, to sidestep these problems. But now, for, for artists working directly within Iran and, and trying to send their work out, it's going to be an absolute milestone to have, uh, to have sanctions lifted and, and, you know, Iran open for business again. 
talk to me a little bit about this next artist because this is a Lebanese artist, but also they have Armenian roots, don't they? Really, the interesting thing about Paul Girgozian, who's considered probably one of the most prominent Lebanese artists, is um, his life trajectory. I mean, he was born to parents that survived the Armenian massacre. He then, uh, he was born in Jerusalem and then moved later on to Lebanon where he experienced a civil war. So his work really absorbed all the experiences of conflict that, that, that he encountered in his life. And although he used an extremely vibrant and, and really gestural palette, um, a lot of the work has undertones of grief involved in it and, and central really around the mother figure who for him was important in, in keeping the community together at times of conflict and, and disaster. So conflict, genocide, some pretty dark themes in terms of what you guys see. There are, there, there are quite a lot of dark themes, but they really reflect the life experience of, of artists. And really, artists are people that, that are like sponges. They soak up the, the kind of milieu that they're working in. But there's a lot of beauty, there's a lot of visual exuberance, which you can see in other works. So really, we have the full sort of gamut of, of human emotions reflected in the art from the region.